it's a young girl and that's really where her story starts and I'm not going to tell you too much about it because Genevieve is but she's now the face of her foundation and we're going to hear all about it. Genevieve thanks so much for joining me how are you? I'm fine thank you and Merry Christmas to you and everyone out there. Genevieve, tell us a little bit about your corporate career. What were you doing in another life? Sure, sure. Um, I always wanted to climb the corporate ladder. To me, that was success for a woman and a woman in New York. So that's what I pursued. And I was doing just that. I was a workaholic and first in, first, last out, climbing that ladder in the TV syndication world, which is basically the world of TV reruns. And I love TV, so that was a perfect match for me. And I was doing a lot of marketing and um, moving from assistant to you know manager to director and finally to vice president of marketing for one of those TV syndication companies. And I really, really loved it. You know, I worked all the time. I had no time for marriage or kids. You know, I just wanted to get to that top, top office. And what happened was one day in my mid thirties in my apartment that I, that I owned, I was, you know, I was able to do things that I, I had always wanted to do. And I bought myself a little apartment and in that apartment, I heard a voice come from here, from in here. And I know it wasn't from here because I heard, I hear this voice all the time as probably we all do, but I recognized it from a different place from deep here. And it asked me inside me, I heard it ask me, if this is the next 30 years of your life, is this enough? And totally. that really shocked me, as you can imagine. I think that will uh, ring true to so many women that are listening just now, because like you said, it, you, there's a sacrifice for a woman who wants to be able to climb the corporate ladder in the extent that you're talking it feels like one has to give I know that's the reality is changing slightly now as things change but that that's how hard it is and mm -hmm. I totally get that voice that's coming from within I also think though that you know your experience in the corporate world has obviously helped with where you're at at the moment how you would you change the fact that you had gone through that or would you wish you'd started the foundation sooner well, absolutely wish I had started it sooner so that I could have helped started helping more children sooner. But, you know, I've learned, we, we all learn things happen at the right time for the right reason. And yes, you bring what you've done up till that point to what you're going to do next. And talking about personal branding, because I was in marketing, it was second, it became second nature to me to know the story is what people want to hear. And I, and I talk about that. That's why I wrote my book, because it's that story that really um, connects with people. I talk about the human connection and sharing our story. And the, you know, people always said it's the power of one with one idea. And in 20 years of growing pajama program and writing my book, Purpose, Passion and Pajamas, it's about the power of one another, not the power of one. And I and just learned why, all, all that marketing. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to have this chat with you because I think that um, conversation is so powerful and your story. Um, I just want to kind of sort of touch on the fact that, you know, your corporate career and I, you know, I'm the exact same as you. I'm, I now love running my own business, but I learned so much working with other people and through the struggle of having to, you know, answer to people and different systems and procedures etc you know it kind of gives you a little bit of basis for when you go on to do what you're passionate about now tell us exactly what your project is tell us about the pajamas tell us how it started tell us about that first conversation with that little girl that's led you to where you are right now sure um so when i heard that voice if this is the next 30 years of your life is it enough i knew instinctively the answer was no i had been working so hard and so long and really i was alone what did i have to show for it i had a pretty apartment i had you know a closet full of clothes and i could travel and um those were all good things and i enjoyed them all always wanted them but at the end of the day it wasn't doing anything to change or make anything better and in in minutes i realized i really wanted to think about the next 30 years and I went to the children in my mind because I didn't have time, didn't have them. Uh, and I thought, you know, I read the paper and I see the news and all these children in my area 
are hurt and somewhere someone's taking them to safety. So I started calling police stations and asking them about the kids and they directed me to a few shelters. And I called and I asked if I could come and read to the children at night. And they thought that was a lovely idea. And I was so excited. I, one night I brought a whole bunch of children's books to a shelter and they led me in and um, I write it all out in, in my book, which is pretty raw and honest because it wasn't all easy as anyone who's ever run or worked at a nonprofit or thought about it knows. Um, but it started off as me volunteering to read to kids at night. And what happened was I saw where they were going to sleep after I read to them. And it was their room, you know, a couple of futons and couches maybe more than one or two children up on the surfaces. In some cases, they didn't have anything to change into for bed. And when I first saw it, all these memories of my mom at my bedside and my sister and brother's bedsides, reading us stories and you know, giving us love and hugs and kisses. And of course, we were wearing pajamas that we changed into. And these children had none of that love and comfort and bedside um, you know, company. And I asked if I could bring some pajamas the next day. And I brought them the next time I went. And one little child, one little girl, she was about six or so, she was so afraid. She didn't want to take them. She hadn't said anything all night while I was reading the stories. And finally, she whispered to me after I was trying to coax her to take these pretty pink pajamas I brought for her. And she whispered, what are pajamas? What are they? And that changed everything. The, the obsession began. That breaks your heart though, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, it still does when I, when I think about it. I can still see her standing near me. And it was just, uh, it was one of those moments that changed everything. I think, um, I mean, that's incredible. I think it's lovely that you were going in and reading to them, which is obviously a need because there are so many charities out there that, they create, um, they, they give something that they think people need, but there's not sometimes the actual need for it. It's more our perceived feeling that that's what the person in need needs. Um, but reading stories to kids, like I think that's as basic as it gets. And it's something that every child needs, just needs attention from an adult, someone who's loving and caring and reading to them. And the pajamas, like I would never have thought of the pajamas. And like you probably didn't either till you went there and this little girl mm -hmm. just said well what are they and pajamas are magical they really are my mom yes. sends me new yes. pajamas every christmas yeah it's there's a there's a process and a magic about pajamas that you we just don't think about until we don't have and i remember hearing that story originally about the little girl and getting goosebumps and knowing i had to have this conversation with you <laughs> You know, it, it's divine intervention. You know, I've learned, and any entrepreneur, you probably know too, you know, the universe is a big part of our our lives when you take something on and you, you know, you're dependent on, of course, your inner strength, you're dependent on other people, but the universe has a part to play. And there, like you said, I would have never thought about giving someone in need a pair of pajamas, but that's what came to me. And I, there are several, lots of, lots of things that happened along the way that there is no real answer for, except that it's, it's magical or something comes to you from the universe, an idea or an actual gift that you need at that time. So you've been doing this for 20 years now. That's well, how do you know how many children you've you've touched so yeah, far? Yeah, I know that with pajama program, we've reached more than well, we've distributed more than seven million new pajamas and new books to children. That's amazing, and that's all across America. Yeah, it's across the U.S., Puerto Rico. In some cases, overseas, when we've had enough to share, we've gotten requests. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the process? Where are you getting the pajamas from? Are you partnering up with some, you know? people that may make pajamas or are they all donated? Are you buying them? How does that work? All of that, everything. All of them. Yeah, yeah, all <laughs> of that. A bit of column A, B and C. <laughs> yes, yes. That's incredible. And the original little girl, are you, do you, are you still in contact with her? 
No, they they are very transient. They come and go. I don't know what happened to her. There are a few that um, have been recipients of our readings. We can, we have readings and pajamas and books for years that I do know still. But no, she came and went. And you know, back then I had no clue that pajama program would grow and that I'd be doing this, writing a book, speaking about finding your purpose. Yeah. So the notes, you know, I wasn't taking notes. I only started taking handwritten notes, you know, maybe a year in when I thought I had to, you know, when I did want to keep records because I saw I was going to keep doing this. I didn't know how big we'd get. I didn't know how many people would want to help. You know, it was, it was my purpose. I say, find your pajamas, find your purpose. Um, but I didn't realize how many adults it would touch the same way, like the same reaction that you had, you know, oh my gosh, I didn't think about it. Oh my goodness. All these children need it, especially at bedtime. These children are afraid. They've been hurt. They've been abandoned. Um, you know, if they're with a family that can barely, you know, make ends meet, they need support and there's so much stress in their lives and they're so young to have to deal with that. Now, the, this um, show is obviously about say, personal branding, and we'll talk a little bit in a minute about how you've built your personal brand and how that's benefited the, the program as well. But I think um, it doesn't matter whether it's a foundation or a business you're starting. I know that you know taking notes and very early on is so important because that is such a big part of your of your story and what you'll use later on to be able to help other people, to convert other people, to attract other people to what it is you're doing. Um, and that's something that I also struggled with at the beginning of my business. And I, I don't feel like I'm doing anything as grand as what you're doing and everybody's sleeping quite nicely at night that I'm working with. But it is important because I, you know, I've only been doing this a year and there's already so much that I've forgotten and I have to think, what what have I done this mm. year? So, you know, take note of absolutely everything because you know, you've been doing this for 20 years. I'm sure that, you know, you read things that you wrote down 15, 16 years ago and you go, oh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. And it's amazing, you know, how many handwritten notes that I had in folders where I just took a black marker and marked up the folder and hand wrote business plans on, on lined paper. You know, I mean, it's looking back, it's very unprofessional, but it's what worked for me. And, and I'm a believer of, you know, your, your hand actually with a pen writing on paper as opposed to typing it up. I think that there's also energy that goes into the hand to paper method. And so I look back and I just laugh at, how amateurish I, I kept notes and made business plans in the early days. But, you know, I think if the intention's there and if you're focused and you're driven, and for me, I was obsessed, it, you know, works. And, you know, there, there are lots of things that contributed to that, that whole branding, personal branding that we call now. Yeah, oh, I totally agree with the writing down notes. My biggest problem is I can't sometimes read my handwriting afterwards. All notes. <laughs> I know, me too. So tell me where the foundation is at now. Pajama program and it's pajamaprogram.org. Um, mm -hmm. People can go on and see where we are now. We're celebrating 20 years in 2021, which will be a big deal. For me, it's been about 22, 23 years because before I made it official, I was running around the streets, you know, with bags of, of pajamas, like Santa Claus, bags of pajamas and books. So I decided a few years ago, um, since I've been speaking this whole time and telling the story about the little girl. And that's been a great way for me to keep that personal piece alive and to give me the opportunity to do what I love, which is be with people and, and talk to people and share stories. I wanted to write my book. So I we hired an executive director who's great and she runs the day to day and I get to just work on my speaking and my book to share the stories and now to share with adults who want to find their purpose and maybe waited, you know, waited until the kids were in college or waited until they had the money and, you know, and, and I teach and coach personal strategy that it's time. It's never the right time where everything is going to be perfect. And if you wait for that time, it may never, you may never do what you really love. And I, you know, I talk to people and coach them on how to do it in a big way or a small way now, why everything is going to work out now. 
Yeah, I love that. And I think that the pyjamas is very relatable. I know that there's lots of analogies that people have written about, but for me, the pyjama strikes a chord just because, you know, like I've spoken to you before, pyjamas are kind of magical. They're, you know, something that we we all love and we have that process. It feels like this is nighttime now. I've got my pyjamas on. Although going through lockdown, um, I'm sure a few of us have gone through our daytime pyjamas and our nighttime pyjamas. <laughs> yes. yes. So tell us a little bit more about what we will find in the book. Um, the book is the how and why I started pajama program. All the stories along the way, the ups and downs. There were downs, um, ran out of money, overspent, um, got into debt buying pajamas. And um, I met a great guy along the way. And it's a story, that love story. It's, it's a love story on so many levels between me and the little girl between me and all the people that I told this story to and how that human connection just grew incredibly and how people wanted to help and the extraordinary things that people have done and continue to do. And it's the love story of meeting the right man at the right time. And, you know, I was afraid there's lots of stories about me being afraid to ask questions and to tell people what I was doing because I didn't know how I was going to make the leap, jump off that corporate ladder. You know, it scared me, but I, I knew I had to do it. I knew I just had to close my eyes and, you know, and just jump and pray and do whatever I had to do. And I met, you know, I met my um, boyfriend at the time and I knew I had to tell him what I was thinking because he thought he was getting involved with someone who was going to be, you know, a career girl and be 50% of the finances, you know, in a marriage if we got married. And when I told him what I was doing and on the side and what I wanted to do, he said, go for it. So I knew he was a great guy. That doesn't mean we had an easy time of it. There's lots of that in the book, the ups and downs, but um, he's my hero and we figured out how to make it work. And um, after a few years, I was able to take a small salary and, um, but it was, it was difficult, but the most rewarding life and, you know, everything, everything changed and here we are. I think that's so true though, because once you start doing what it is you love and you love your life inside and out and like nothing's perfect and nothing worth having is easy either. But you know, you're talking about your love story with your essentially your business and your personal life. It all kind of just, it, it just aligns when it's meant to, I think. I think so too. And I've learned what I always spoke about and I speak about now with my book and it's in my book after every chapter, there are heart of the matter lessons. And they're life lessons that I learned. Like, like I'm saying to you, you know, I, I heard all these years, oh, look, you're the power of one. Look what the power of one can do. And, and, and you know, I, I said before, it's, I learned it's not the power of one. It's the power of one another that moves mountains and moves people. And there, there are so many lessons that I offer that are, are simple. And we sort of forget, but it's really what we need to remember now. Uh, more than any other time is how to live from our heart, listen to our heart voice, which is what I called that, to find our purpose now, bring it into our lives now, even in a small way, it changes everything. So all that's what I speak about. That's how I, I help people make that personal transformation. It's, it's a combination of these lessons that um, I had to remember. Yeah, I love that. Finding your why is very important and your purpose and everything like that. Yeah. Building find your, your personal brand. <laughs> find your pajamas. I love that. Um, you know, I know you come from a marketing background and so have I. So personal branding seems just like an extension of what we've we've always been doing, whether we've called it personal branding or not. When we talked earlier about how I didn't realize I was doing personal branding until someone started talking about it and I thought that sounds very familiar. You, you know, we've we've kind of started a little bit earlier with the personal branding because we're familiar with it. Do you, um, can you give us some examples of what you've done to build your personal brand to be able to push the story out further? I know we're doing the podcast just now, so we're hopefully speaking to a few people around the world. But, you know, over the years, what are some of the most effective ways you've built your personal brand? Well, I think it is the story. It's my story. It's your story. 
we all have a story and I don't think we tell it enough, but that's the way to connect with people heart to heart. You know, I mean, I don't really care where anyone went to school. I don't really care about the stats in your life and things like that. But I care what you've been through, what you're going through. And I was just, you know, climbing the corporate ladder and using my title and my career and my success in those areas to really introduce myself to people and to the world. But I realized the simple story of what happened to me with that little girl and what she said and how it changed things was more, um, was, was deeper than anything that I did that you could put on paper as far as, you know, grades in school and, you know, accomplishments. It was real. It was what connected us. And I think I instinctively, after so many years of marketing, knew to keep things short and sweet. I knew I had to tell people something that, you know, we call it an elevator speech that touched on them. And for me, growing my personal brand out of pajama program was the same thing. I mean, I think I love the word pajamas. Of course, it has a personal meaning to me, but I called my book Purpose, Passion, and Pajamas. And it's the subtitle is how to embrace the human connection, how to transform your life and how to lead with meaning. And that's all wrapped up in this silly word of pajamas, but it is purpose and it is passion. So I continue to, to lean on those, those words, especially pajamas to sort of make the transition for me into what I'm doing now for adults to, to personally help them find their pajamas or find their purpose. So I think it's a continuation of the love story, telling the story, um, hooking your, your, um, your topic on something that is, that resonates with people like pajamas and, and like purpose. Um, so I try to, I try to entwine them in a way that works to keep pajama program top of mind and helps me find my next chapter to help the adults in in the situation yeah and continuously talking about the same topic i i know we feel you know everybody feels like oh i've said this a million times but you're always saying it to a new person to a new audience right. and you never know who it is that actually needs to hear it when you were talking about when you met your boyfriend and you know he would have thought oh we're both 50 50 both corporates mm -hmm. you know going into this life i mean that's massive as well to have that conversation because that is building your personal brand saying no, this is the direction I'm going in. And sometimes that one conversation one-to-one -one is harder than it is to stand in front of 50 or 500 people talking about pajamas because that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of your life and it'll dictate what happens in your personal life, which, you know, I'm all for personal branding is, um, is many things to many people. And I don't work in the kind of, you know, we're all Kardashians and we need to have IGTV, et cetera. But it is whatever people are seeing of us, even on the individual level, not just all of the people. Those, because I think you said to me, was, was it 7 million pairs of pajamas have gone out and so books, far? Yeah, 7 million. Yeah, see, that's 7 million children you've touched um, with pajamas. Um, I keep saying it, and I don't know that that's the best terminology for it, but, you know, you've you've actually impacted. But, you know, that conversation at the beginning with your, your partner is also part of your story. It is, and in the book I talk about um, the first person that I had the nerve to talk about what I was thinking. Still had my corporate job, but I knew I was going to jump any day. And I didn't want to go too close, family member or him, because if it was a horrible idea, I didn't want to embarrass myself. I was still in that position of feeling like I'd be embarrassed. But I did tell um, a woman that I was friends with who wasn't in my business, but she was a corporate person too. And she shot me right down. She asked me a million questions. Why would you want to do that? Why don't you just do it on Saturday? How could you change your career? You've built so much. You love all this stuff. You're going to give up your apartment. And I had no answers. And I remember we were having drinks and I was like, I better get another drink. And I just felt this small at the end of the conversation. And I was, we were going to have dinner and I made an excuse. I had to leave because I couldn't even breathe. It was like, she just punched me. Um, mostly because it was so personal to me, these children, and she just didn't feel it. And also, 
I didn't have any answers. How was I going to make any money? How was I going to pay the mortgage? I didn't know. You know, I'm, I'm always that person that jumps and then figures it out later. Not always the best strategy. It's my way. Uh, probably put more stress on myself than I need to. Not the way I, I, um, I think is right for everyone. Um, but that was that was that was very hard. It was very hard to stand up after that beating. I felt like. So I knew I had to find somebody to trust. And I talk about that in my book too. You need your cheerleaders right at the beginning because things like this will happen. People will shoot you down. People will ask you questions you don't have the answer to and you have to be strong. And you have to be honest and say, I, I, I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet, but I will. And that's what my mother said. Um, you know, I don't know how, but you will figure it out. And I think it's a beautiful idea. So yeah, I needed I, I, that. Yeah. Your mom's so right, because if you're so passionate about it, um, you'll make it work. And you she just, knew the will. power. Yeah, she knew the power of bedtime and pajamas. And I didn't know then that it's much more than just the materials of giving a child a pair of pajamas. It's that whole comfort and love and security that I got, that hopefully you got and, and everyone watching and listening got as a child or give as a mom or dad. That's the stability and the foundation that that a child takes with them as he or she grows. And that's what was so empty for these children. They didn't have that. And I think my mom knew instinctively that's what I was giving. And it took me years of, of hearing stories and listening to adults about their children or, or their experiences. That's what we're really giving them, that bedtime, that nighttime. And our motto is good night is a good day. How is a child going to get through the night, get up, feeling refreshed and energized and worthy, worthy of, you know, being, being successful. Oh, hundred percent. And we don't, um, I mean, I don't think we realize how important sleep is. I mean, the McNeil's we can sleep standing up if we're tired. <laughs> it's, um, but the impact of not having a well rested sleep and, you know, they talk about how you've got to have a, not just as children, but as adults, a routine, a wind down, you know, we're too busy yeah. with screens, etc. But, you know, I think about my bedtime when I was younger, like, you know, being read to and the, oh, I don't want to go to bed yet. And the whole game behind it and the, you know, the shower, the bath, getting into nice clean pajamas and making sure they match and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I can't imagine not having that. So I think what you're doing is absolutely incredible, but not just what you're doing for the children, what you've now translated that into for adults, because it's so understandable. It's just so basic and innate and inside of us that, you know, it gave me goosebumps as soon as I heard the story and I just thought about it. And I don't think about my bedtime routine as a five-year-old very mm. often, <laughs> but right. I still remember it. Right. Isn't that funny? We all have memories. Yep. You mm. can ask a room full of a hundred people for a bedtime memory and they will have one, whether they remember being the child or they remember it as an adult to giving their child bedtime. Yeah, 100%. I love what you're doing, Genevieve. How can um, everyone get in touch with you or find more information? For me, it's GenevievePituro.com. Will you have that or my name there? People can, can yep, I'll um, put it all in me. the show notes, but if anyone's listening, yep. Okay. It's GenevievePituro.com. You'll find out about the work I do in the book and the story. And I'm on all social media. And for Pajama Program, it's PajamaProgram.org. Thank you so much, Genevieve. That was a brilliant conversation. And even in this 40 degrees, you've given me goosebumps again. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks. Thanks for, for having me and for um, giving me this opportunity to share. No, it's been a fantastic story and I really appreciate your time.